People in the United States distrust government and believe the game is rigged because it is. The middle class struggle to earn a living wage, while the billionaire class passes laws which shift wealth from the middle class to the mega rich. Let's look at some examples. Welcome to PA Voter Information Network. This is Larry DiMarco, your host. Do you watch my YouTube channel but haven't subscribed yet? Why not now? It's easy and free. Just click the red button and the bell right beside it and you will be notified of all new content. This is episode two of a five-part series. In part one, we covered the Powell Manifesto, a, mer a memorandum written by a lobbyist to the Chamber of Commerce encouraging corporations to seize political power and control of the media to protect the free enterprise system. In this episode, we will cover examples where corporations used its wealth and political power to shift tax burden onto the middle, middle class. Here's an example of this burden shifting. Bill Clinton campaigned for president on a platform for rolling back excessive CEO pay, which more than tripled from 88 to 92, because this pay was deductible to corporations. Clinton's idea was to cap this write-off for executive salary above the first million. But what actually happened? With the new law he put in place gave an exception for performance pay in bonuses, which allowed, pay to continue, which allowed CEO pay to continue to rise to astronomical levels almost com and be completely tax deductible. Here's a graph to show. Another example of government policy in favor of big businesses was the repeal of the Glass-Steagall Act, which cost taxpayers nearly trillions of dollars. Glass-Steagall Act was passed in 1933 to protect people's hard-earned savings from Wall Street speculative investments. Once Glass-Steagall was removed, nothing separated investment banks from commercial banks and nothing regula regulated something called derivatives, a uh, speculative investment, that ushered too big to fail mega banks. Senator Sanders warned against its repeal. I believe this legislation in its current form will do more harm than good. It will lead to fewer banks and financial service providers, increased charges and fees for individual consumers and small businesses, diminished credit for rural America, and taxpayer exposure to potential losses should a financial conglomerate fail. This repeal led to the stock market crash of 2008. We're all painfully familiar with this. So how did this happen? By design, the government caused the need for a big bailout and it continues this current situation of unregulated banks to this day. Now, another example, in June of 2003, the Medicare Modernization Act. It was, hopes, it was supposed to help seniors to pay for prescri prescription drugs, but what actually happened was it prevented the government from negotiating prescription drug reimbursements. So it fixed drug prices at astronomically high levels and caused taxpayers to pay the highest drug prices of any industrialized nation. It was hailed as free market, but it was actually a government policy in favor of big pharma. In these examples provided, how did these multi-billionaire industries switch tax burdens off of themselves onto the middle class? Well, with such extreme wealth, they purchase political influence. When you have money to play the game, you have the resources to pass laws to benefit your interests and create policy in your favor. Robert Reich explained his, in his documentary, Saving Capitalism, regulation versus deregulation is not the issue. The issue is what kind of regulation or who does regulation benefit? The old regulation protected the middle class. Now, regulation protects mega billionaire corporations. He says we need to end corporate welfare because it costs taxpayers money. We have to end corporate welfare now. When corporations get special handouts from the government, subsidies and tax breaks, it costs you. It means you have to pay more in taxes to make up for these hidden expenses. And government has less money for good schools and roads, Medicare and national defense, and everything else you need. 
You might call these special corporate handouts corporate welfare. But at least welfare goes to real people in need. Corporations are not people, despite what the Supreme Court says, and they don't need or deserve handouts. In the big picture, corporate welfare is costing tens of billions of dollars a year. Some estimates put it over $100 billion. In reality, only about 12% of federal spending goes to individuals and families. An increasing portion goes to corporate welfare. For example, the oil, gas, and coal industries get billions in their own special tax breaks. Big agribusiness gets farm subsidies. Big pharma gets their own subsidy in the form of a ban on government using its bargaining power under Medicare to negotiate lower drug prices. Big Wall Street banks have an implicit guarantee they'll be bailed out if they get into trouble again. And hedge fund and private equity managers get a special tax loophole that treats their income as capital gains at a lower tax rate than ordinary income. To put this in context, ending corporate welfare would free up the same amount of money for the United States government that it currently spends on the entire Department of Education. This has been part two of a five-part series. In part three, we will discuss another way corporations shift wealth away from the middle class, the use of monopolies. Thanks for watching. If you like this episode, please click the like button below the video. Share the link with the people on your contact list and social media friends. And please leave some feedback in the comment section below. I would love to hear your feedback. Signing off. Tune in next time. Bye for now.